I'm gonna change out the shower valve. Maintenance guy tried to, couldn't get the cartridge out, tried to hack it out and did a good job really destroying that thing. So that thing's pretty nasty too, but we're not here for that. Here for the shower valve, I cut that off. And so I put these caps on, you can see up there too. Put these caps on, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, last week. This thing couldn't get it to stop leaking. They didn't want to change it out immediately as a rental. So I just put a cap on here and cap on there and got the water to stop. So that's good for then. So I got all the water off downstairs. Now I'm gonna start taking all this trim apart. So I pretty much brought all my tools <coughs> with me. I don't wanna keep making trips up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. So, first thing we're gonna do is, since this is on there pretty good and it's soldered on there, you really don't have to, really don't have to back it up. You know, you can, but this probably is gonna Save these caps, man. So in good shape. Let me take this off and we'll see if it comes off all right. This thing felt like a turn. Yeah, it did. So we're gonna we're gonna replace this too. If you ever feel something like that and it feels like it turns, it's because it did turn. So <laughs> you're gonna need to tighten it or uh, figure something else out because that's the last one that you want dripping in the wall. <coughs> okay. So we got all that. So take this tool out. Put it on the charger. multi-tool to cut the fiberglass. I'll show you how we're going to do that. Charge that puppy. Take this cutter. Put it on here. channel off we think our saws all and since we're demoing this out I'm not really gonna play games with it I'm just gonna chop it off there you go yeah. what a pain okay <coughs> we'll take all these trim pieces put all this stuff over here this junk. Cool. So to get an accurate measurement of where we're gonna be, take our pencil, get these out of the way so I don't get them dirty. <coughs> now do all this cleanup at the very end. So careful not to scratch this around. Clean up all this loose junk. There we go. And then I'll center it about as best as I can. Just eyeball it pretty good. Looks like the hole's a little bit low. You want to center it from this, not from the hole, because what if the hole's up like this? So you want to center it from the middle of the shower valve. So it looks like we're pretty good right there. So I trace a line. And I like to use pencil so that it 
comes off later pretty easily. It's just <coughs> it's just pencil and it's not. There we go. Cool. <coughs> so now we'll take the battery. Okay, yeah, let's just use this then. Let's change the uh This side. Alright. Put it on, put on top. Just because the angle that we're going to be working on is probably fine. So you want to stay. <coughs> okay. You want to stay like a half to three quarter inch, you know, off of here. I like to use this because it'll cut it nice and straight. see what we're doing. This is just a, uh, see how it says finish wall flush with this surface. This is just the rough in cover. You could install this even without this thing on. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot our shower valve. Look at that. All right, got a mow in, a pin. So we'll get this out of here. See if it has a cartridge in it already. It does not. Keep all the tools over here. So pull this plug out. Some of these channels. Perfect. Cool. Let's see if it's about the same size. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Looks like it might work. Cool. So, what I like to do. Cut it right here, if you can see that. Cut the hub right there, and then just unsweat this little piece. And do the same thing right here. Let's see how good I am with the sawzall, if I can even do it.
we fit. Okay. So let's see. Which battery I've left. Oh, we're running out. It might be easier to do this too. so that we don't fry anything, you know. It's the last thing I need to burn a house down. Spray it off inside of there. Keep that there. Keep our channel locks. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this guy out of the way. We need a place to put it. So we can put it right on top of there. So I want to keep the flame. You can even see that. Let me see where the uh, camera's at. Let's see if you can see the other side of there. Let's see what I see. Keep the flame kind of low right here and keep it on the brass because we don't want to unswept the other joint up top. We want to try not to do that unless we have to. We're gonna keep our flame low and just be patient. It's only half inch, so it's not going to take that long to heat up. You can see it bubbling.
Same thing, keep it low, and then rest it on here, and rest it on a little bit. That one's starting to move too, but that's okay, as long as you clean it off, I'll show you. I'll clean this one off first with some flux, get that solder to move in there. And then we'll do this one after, I'm sure we've got all that junk off of there. Let's see if our shot valve even fits in there. If it doesn't, we'll just unsweat those and put some regular 90s in. We'll just unsort that one, it's no big deal. We'll just use regular 90s. I'd feel better about it if we just did that. Since there's no fittings nearby it, So, yeah, I'll just do the same thing with this one. Touching the uh, wood at all. Not burning the wood, just keep it low, keep it pointed safely, keep it off the wood. Let's 
So, let's see if we got some 45s. Street 45. Street 45. 90 and 90. to bring it out. Looks pretty good. I think that's what we're gonna do. A little too big. We'll get a new piece. Get all those scraps I have. <laughs> I'll take a little mirror. I clean every surface off real good. So we're gonna dry fit this puppy in here. Should we not burn my fingers? and one of those screws. Just don't drop your screwdriver down through. Down to the next floor. Take this screwdriver off and this screw off, no big deal. And then we'll actually be able to cut this piece of copper and reuse it. Cut 
this off right here. So it's probably gonna be too long anyway. Doesn't really need to be that long at all. Because the spout that we have is a slip spout. So you know sometimes this is a little bit dirty, a little bit messy, but this is not new construction, you know, this is this is service work, so it's a world of difference, you know, doing this kind of work as opposed to doing a new build or something, you know. Thing's pretty clean because we gotta put it up in there in the hub. Make sure, really, we're just trying to make sure it's smooth. Doesn't actually need to be clean yet. That's what the uh, wire brush and the sand cloth and whatever is to clean it off. We just want to make sure it's smooth, that there's no lumps so that it'll fit inside of the hub. Good. So, throw some on there. We haven't done any soldering yet, so they're still nice and clean. I actually already put some on there, but let's do it again for good measure. Look at that. Still nice and Nice and straight where we need to be. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our rag. Hmm. We're gonna clean off all of our fittings, all the excess that's on here, everything. All the extra flux and everything so it's not dripping all over the whole place. Okay, cleaning up here. Gonna make sure that we're straight. In all the sockets are in, everything's in place. That we look good, that we're straight, that we're centered, that our tote spout is centered. All right, good. Looks good. Now we can solder it in. So we'll grab a roll of solder. Well, the only one I can see that's going to be tight is this one right here. See how it's actually sitting like there's like no, there's like no space between it. So let's see if we can do it one at a time. Let's do the famous uh, spray on the back side first, trying to get the fittings real wet. But we can take a little bit of water, but not a lot. Oop, that to you. I just don't want this wood getting wet. There we go. Now we'll put something underneath here so that. 
we don't uh, bump it. So that it doesn't uh, so it's gonna wanna drop too probably because see if we're still straight. Yeah there we go. Okay. Once we get that one out of here, that's the only one that's it's actually hanging from there. Feel it actually just riding on the end on the hub. Let me solder. So I'm sure when I hit that, I like to do it immediately so that it kind of dries right down there on the spot. So that one's probably good. Check them all with a mirror when we're done before we even think about turning the water on. Some of this might be hard to see, but you know, you can see it great if you can't. Sorry. I've got a GoPro on now, so it's kind of. can be kind of hard. to wipe these in case you haven't noticed already I like to get all the boogers and everything off of them really want that solder move in there plus it just looks cleaner and neater you know you don't want people coming behind you say who the hell is this guy what the hell was he thinking Probably say that anyway, but keep it low. We wet that wood down already so that we're not gonna hopefully not gonna char it or anything like that. And it's quite hot enough yet. There we go. So we're moving around. Feel it inside of there. Okay. I get maybe this guy. The next one. These ones on the top. Let's see how close 
we can get to making it look like we know or care about what we're doing, or both, I guess. This one, you gotta be careful and make sure that the solder goes in there and doesn't just basically make a film over the two fittings because it's happened before and then I turned the water back on and the thing exploded. I just gob it up. I don't know when I put my flux on it. Take our mirror, we'll clean them off first, first of all. Clean them off, get all the flux off. Spray down in the wall, make sure we're not, make sure we're not doing nothing crazy. Wipe off all this flux that's on here. Sometimes I'm guilty of kind of making a mess when I saw her sometimes, but hey, I don't really have leaks, so sometimes that's more important than whether you make a mess or not. Does it leak? Okay, have our flashlight. because I don't want to do this twice. Oh, it looks good. It looks nice and straight. Okay. So now, I'm going to cool off just a little bit more. That little booger off of there. I'm sorry. It ain't hurting nothing. So I'm going to cool it off a little bit more. Put the cartridge in. There's the pin, here's the cartridge. Let's lube it up. So I'll just use this regular lube from the supply house. It has hot and cold on here, hot cold. So I just put this on generously. It's a water-based lubricant, so it's not gonna clog anything. So I actually lube it up in here too. It's good practice to do that. Hot, cold goes on top. Obviously hot on the left, cold on the right. I'll put our pin in there. We'll give it a tap. Just to catch through here. There we go, right there. Don't want it too far down, but oops. See, just had to touch it. 
right there. That's where you want it. If you can film on the bottom, good. Now this flat part on here is actually in the on position. So you want to turn it so that it's off. So I'm going to keep the water back on. Slowly. I will be right back. Okay. Really sorry about that. Get this plate on. So if you don't know how this plate goes on, I think I got ahead of myself. This plate goes on. It's got a bolt with the with a clip or a clamp or whatever right here, just a little metal bar. Hang those inside of there. And slide it in. And once that sucker's in there, make sure it's on the other side. center it roughly where it goes, you know it's not going to be exact the first try. Put it in there, just real close to where it goes, make sure those things are grabbing on. Okay, then you can scoot it over a little bit, move it around, scoot it up, whatever you need to do, just very carefully because this is very sharp. So that seems like that's probably about where it should go. In, you just center it up real good. See my lines, they're, they're, it's just it's just a template, it's just a roughly where it needs to be. It doesn't need to be exact, you know, and that's why I use pencil because sometimes this happens where it's just a hair off. You know, you need to uh, adjust a little bit based on where you put the shower valve, based on, you know, a couple of factors. So I'm gonna tighten that up. Make sure we're level, make sure we're centered. We are. Cool. So that, that one's in. That one's in. So go ahead and tighten this up. Tighten that guy up. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Now we'll put the trim on. Do the shower head last. So I'll put our this guy on there. And then we'll put this guy on there. See, it's pretty darn close. Right there. And there's a small gap right here, small gap right here. What you don't want is it off, you know, way off centered or something, you know. You want it to be pretty pretty even I put these shower valves in especially moans more times than I can even count so I was able to kind of tell where it was supposed to go so I just put this in basic way I don't take any restrictors out I don't modify it at all I just put in factory meaning the dials are lined up you know when you offset the dials and you put it in there, you know, then that allows it to go even hotter. And then if you put the dial all the way here, obviously there's a limit. You can, you can scald and go all the way here, but there's kids in the house, you know, so just going to be able to, you know, turn it to standard, standard temperature, non-scalding. If they want to adjust it or pay someone to adjust it or whatever, then that's their problem. Not going to be me. So, we will put this guy in, right there, clip 
clean it all off real good. Then we'll put some caulk around this edge right here, not on the bottom. trick to do that. These always come with these just wrap all over it so it doesn't scratch. Now we'll go ahead and so the shower arm goes like this. It does not go like this. It goes like this coming out of the wall. And that's how it goes. So I always like to put this on first but it's always real loose. So what I do is take another bunch of shower arms and I Crimp it down a hair, not too much, you don't want to scratch it, you know, but just crimp it a little bit, crimp these teeth down. See that? Crimp these teeth down. Just you know, so it pushes on there nice and tight so that when you push it on, you only scratch the inside of it. <laughs> thick tape you only need a couple of wraps of this you don't need to do uh, a 20 wrap uh, whatever you know that's all it needs and then we'll do a little bit of dope I need to get a new one of that too I forgot the cap came off so you don't want to put too much on there you want to clog the shower head but just enough and I use these So our goal let me get a little bit more. Our goal is to tighten it on and that plate be just flush against the wall. So to tighten it, I use these guys very carefully. And you can feel, you know, you don't want to turn it like crazy and wrench on it. You want to give it some support because this will you'll beat that up and it'll it won't screw in right. So I'll probably go one more turn. Did I go too tight? straight we are well okay so these mowing shower heads they're iron pipe they don't have a gasket in them so I just put very again very gently you don't need to glob this on or you know you do anything like that very carefully you don't really want to see it either so I'll wrap it, try to get as close to the end as you can. Put it like that, make sure it's nice and clean. So 
this isn't necessarily a sealant. This is more of a lube so you can get it to turn without it, you know, doing the uh, screeching. Okay. And the reason why I have these channel locks, if you look at them, they have no teeth on them. Just a bunch of light up. thing you have to be careful of also is that you don't start turning the arm that we just spent all this time you know, once it feels tight it probably is just wipe that clean oops just free spin that okay All the trash is here. Let's turn it on. It's like a shower. Beautiful.